So let's sort of define some terminology here. We have a body. And on that body, we're going to apply some surface forces. And I use the word surface in particular, surface forces. And in continuum mechanics, we call these surface forces tractions. Okay, and these tractions, we're going to normalize them by a little unit of area, surface area. So they're they're force divided by area. Right? So these things are called tractions. Okay. And the other type of force we would have would be body forces. So if we have body forces, this would be the most common one would be gravity. So these are these are things that aren't uh, applied externally, but rather they're they're inherent to the body. So gravity is the most um, in in solid mechanics or mechanics is the most uh, utilized one. But if you did electromagnetics, uh, you might have some other concept of internal forces, right? If a material's uh, magnetically polarized and the magnetic field uh, generated when you uh, apply a current to it would, would be a body force, right? And so this is, you know, typically we'd, we'd have some little uh, infinitesimally small element that we cut out of the body and, and that's gravity acts upon it inherently, right? Or, or this uh, body force in that. So the gravity in this case is a body force. So if we take out a little differential, so if we, if we grab this guy and we pull it out and drop it onto a coordinate system, and our coordinate system would be x1, x2, x3, right, and we draw our cube here. That's a, not a very good cube. So on this little cube, we'll have some tractions. So this will be the traction in the x2 direction. This will be the traction in the x3 direction. This will be the traction in the x1 direction. Okay? And understand that these tractions aren't necessarily uh, normal to the surface. So there could be a little surface normal vector there. And these tractions are not normal, or in general, not normal to these surfaces. And again, just to be painfully explicit, I want to say that each of these are vectors, right? So x1 is made up of t1, x2, t2, x2, x1, rather. t3, x1. OK? And I think I'll have to go to a new page. Uh, we'll, I'll leave this drawing here. We'll flip back to it in a second, right? But basically, now what I want to do is I want to I'm going to cut this. Let's see if I can draw it on here before we go to the next page. I'm going to cut this cube like this. I'm going to cut a tetrahedron. So I'm going to cut a plane across this point, this point. And this point, okay, and then I'm gonna well, let's just go ahead and cut it out and, and draw it in the next slide. So now we have x1, x2. X3, and now draw our tetrahedron. Okay. 
And now this tetrahedron has also got attraction. Playing out, right? So this traction we're going to call Tn. So this is the traction <clears throat> that's normal to this tetrahedron plane, this front face. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to write down how we describe or write down what Tn is in terms. of these arbitrary tractions. And I guess while we're on this page, I should, I should point out that even though I didn't explicitly write it, uh, in order for this body to be in equilibrium, right, that all of the other faces also have uh, tractions on them. So if we just look down the x1 axis, if we're looking down the x1 axis here, uh, so that you see x2, x3, right, then this t, x2 that I've drawn uh, will also have the corresponding negative, negative t, x2, right, because in order for the body to be in equilibrium, that has, that has to be the case, right. So we want to write down Tn in terms of Tx1, Tx2, Tx3. And in order to do that, we, we basically can just use some, some geometry. So um, you know, if we look at sort of uh, well, understand that there's a, no, a unit normal vector here in and hat, right? Um, if we want to know, say, what n is in, in terms of, or the, I'm sorry, what the components of n are in terms of x1, x2, and x3, it's basically just the projection of the dot product operator. So it's, it's basically the components now of n would be uh, the cosine between n and x1. Right. the cosine between n and x2, and the cosine between n and x3. Right. And then also just as an aside, if we just look at, so if we have, if we have an angle theta, right, and this thing right here has a length L, well then, you know, this guy, is obviously L cosine theta, right? Well, that, that same concept applies to areas, right? So if this extends along an area in this direction, then, you know, the area here, or the, I'm sorry, you know, the, the area projected uh, down onto this plane um, is then, you know, the area on the plane is the area times the cosine of theta. And we sort of need these geometric arguments because over here we're going to have uh, this front face, the top face of our tetrahedron where that's defined by our normal vector. This is just going to be delta s. Okay, But the projection down onto, say, this base plane the x1, x2 plane down here. All right, so if we call this guy delta s, and we'll define it in terms of its normal. So delta s and the x3, let's be clear that's a delta. Delta s and the x3, well then that is in N3 delta S. Okay. So basically, with this geometry, 
we're going to write down Newton's second law, right? F equals MA. So on this front face, we have TN, right? So this is the, we're, we want to write down the forces, right? So on the, fr on, on the, on the body. Right? So on this front face, we have TN. Now remember, this is attraction, right? So that's a force per unit area. So in order to turn it into a force so that we can write down F equals MA, we have to multiply by the area. So here, the area is delta S, right? So this is a force, okay? Now on the back face, so use a different color. Let's say on, on this face back here, If you remember, in the previous, now we're talking, you know, th that's this face. That's this face here, right? And I told you already that there has to be a negative minus Tx2 there, right, for this to be in equilibrium. So the, for, the attraction on that back face is minus Tx2. So minus Tx2 and now the area, the, the area here Right, is into delta S by the same argument we made here. Right. And so then likewise for the other components, there's minus T X1 N1 delta S minus T X3 N3 delta S. All right? So that's F, and that's equal to mass, right? So mass could be written as density times volume. And what's the volume of this guy? Well, if you look at the tetrahedron like a pyramid, right? So a pyramid, remember the colors here, a pyramid that has a height defined here. So this is H, right? Well then, the volume of a pyramid is one-third H times or the height times it's the area of the base, right? The base would be delta S, okay? One-third the height times the area of the base. That's the area of a pyramid uh, times L acceleration there. Okay, so this is F equals MA for this body, right? Well, we can immediately see we can get rid of the delta S's by dividing through. Okay. And then also, what we want to actually write down here is in the limit of an infinitesimally small. Remember, this thing we pulled out of the body was uh, basically an infinitesimally small volume. So uh, for this volume to be infin infinitesimally small, then we can take the limit as h goes to zero, right? So for small tetrahedron, h goes to zero, which causes this whole term to go to zero, okay? Right, so then we have this, that t n is equal to T in the X1, N1, plus T in the X2, N2, plus T in the X3, N3. Okay. Now we're going to, just for convention, uh, just sort of the way, the way it's always written. Remember, these are vectors, right? So this would be...
Okay, so just for convention, we're going to take the transpose of this equation. So we want to take the transpose of these such that we end up with and if Tn transpose is equal to N1, N2, N3 times T in the X1 transpose, T X2 transpose, T X3 transpose. So, you know, these are column vectors before, now we've taken their transpose, so these would be the row vectors in a matrix, okay? And this matrix is what has nine components, right? Because these are, these are vectors with three components along the row, so there's a total of nine, right? And so this thing is what we call the stress tensor. So it's basically, in words, it's the tractions in the coordinate directions. And so if we write that equation down, we're going to have Tn i is equal to sigma j i n j. And later on, we'll show that the stress that we'll typically use in this class, the Cauchy stress, is in fact symmetric, so sigma ji equals sigma ij, uh, but in general, it, it, you know, it won't be in a class in kind of nonlinear continuum mechanics. You'll learn other kind of stress tensors, and that's sort of, uh, again, why st the stress is sort of not a fundamental thing, because it uh, turns out there's different work conjugate stresses to every strain that we, that we could define, and we know that there's an infinite number of them. So, um, you know, in general, uh, this, this equation should be written like this, but we know that when we use the Cauchy stress, uh, that you could also write sigma ij there. So in sort of vector form, you know, have this. Okay. And just to write out what all the components of the stress are, so you know what it looks like. And you know, sometimes, a lot of times in the text, uh, this is kind of using the notation, uh, the initial notation that we've been using. But sometimes, you know, if you if you say that, you know, the one direction is the x direction, the two direction is the y direction, the three direction is the z direction, then you might have, and this is also common.
And then just to help you understand, all right, so now in this case I'll, I'll use, uh, this could be x1 or x, uh, this could be x2 or y, this could be x3 or z. I'll write out both of them. So if we draw our cube again. And we go back and we draw this traction. Right? This traction, the components of this traction are sigma 2, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 2, 3, or using x, y, and z, or sigma y, x, sigma y, y, sigma y, z. And just so you know, by convention, what you're looking at here, the first index, right, this is the face defined by normal in, in this case, y, right, or n2. So that's the, the first index, right? The second index, this is the vector component. So the way this reads is sigma 2, 1, this is the N2 face, right, this face, first component, second face, second component, second face, third component. And likewise, all of them would have, so this face would be the N3 face. Right, therefore, its traction vector would be sigma 3, 1, sigma 3, 2, sigma 3, 3, or sigma z, x, sigma z, y, sigma z, z. Okay? So this is sort of the... Uh, geometric definition of the stress tensor. We'll stop here.